This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. I am Mike Galligan with the law offices of Galligan and Newman in McMinnville, Tennessee. I support WCTE, the Upper Cumberland's own PBS station, because I believe it is important to create entertaining TV programs that also promote lifelong learning and understanding. When I support WCTE, I know that I am helping our Upper Cumberland community for generations to come. The law offices of Galligan and Newman provide clients with large firm expertise and small firm personalized care and service. I'm Avery Hutchins, your host for Where Stories Live. In this episode, we explore the history of Darwin School, a historic African-American school located on the west side of town in Putnam County and serves as the only black high school in the Upper Cumberland from 1920 to 1963. It was during this time that segregation was real and was being experienced every day in the Upper Cumberland by the African-American communities. We would like to think that the Upper Cumberland was different, but that was not the case. Just like other communities across America, we too saw the inequalities of segregation that forced black marginalized communities to receive diminished access to facilities, housing, and education. And in January of 1963, history would be changed forever for the African American communities in the Upper Cumberland. The students that attended Darwin would pave the road for future generations, opening doors that no one could imagine could be opened at that time. But prior to 1963, the students of Darwin were just like any other school-age children. They enjoyed all the same experiences as white students, such as playing sports, social gatherings, attending prom, and even taking class trips. Like the white schools, the Darwin School provided young black students a foundation that was invaluable in helping them be prepared and ready to face the ever-changing world. Darwin was the hub for community events, bringing families together from all around the Upper Cumberland. We first sit down with former student Morris Irby. Darwin High School was the only black high school in the Upper Cumberland area. In the Cookville area, the students in the grades, the first through sixth grade, would attend in Cookville. So most of the students that came in to Darwin were the high school students from those areas, Salina, Livingston, Sparta, all good, Silver Point. I was within five minutes of school, and I was telling my daughter about that, and she said, are you kidding me? You, you just had to walk down the hill to school, she said, and I said, that's right. And that's the best part of it. Students were happy. Uh, that's what I remember. When they got off the bus, you know, it's greetings and just a, a really friendly community atmosphere. It wasn't that they, you know, may have gotten on the bus. If you're coming from Slina, I don't know what time you got on the bus. But there wasn't anger or resentment. It was, hello, good morning, you know, let's go on with the day. People were jovial. We always got along, had good times at, at uh, Darwin. I mean, everybody got along, and that's just the way things were back in that day and time. I would describe my experience at Darwin. It was filled with excitement. It was filled with fun. It was uh, filled with hard work, because again, understand, Darwin at the time was all I knew. It provided me a place of entertainment, being able to play basketball, being able to just be around friends I know. We all grew up together. I liked the basketball games that we had because the players, you know, they were awesome and then we had other teams come from out of town and I loved that. First trip I didn't get to go, I don't think I was old enough then. I wasn't in high school then because most of those people in that first picture are a lot older guys. And they, I think Freddie McClellan was on that picture. And then the second picture there was, I think it was a senior class. Went. We went to Washington and New York. It's just a lot of different things. We got to stop a lot of different places, and it was really enjoyable. My dad went to Darwin, see. My mother went to Darwin. And see, they all came back and 
become teachers and stuff like that. It's been a place of prosperity for a lot of black folks. What it meant to me in attending Darwin and getting the education that I got, it was tremendous because I tell people even today, we got a, a great foundation. We didn't have the best resources. We got a good foundation. And you know, you might say, why do you say that? The teachers that we had, um, I mean, they knew what we were going to be confronted with. They knew what we were going to go into out in the world. And they did everything in the world they could to prepare us. The teachers and then like they taught me how to get along with the other kids who were around me that was in my neighborhood and I loved it. The most rewarding thing at Darwin was to have friends, to make friends and be happy. The, the teachers were attentive to the students as far as schooling them to the things that they needed to, to learn and laugh and it it was a situation to where I guess them being local too, that they took more interest in the children, but they were, they were super. The teachers were well trained. Again, they were education focused. You had homework. When you went to school the next day, the focus was going through whatever the academic focus was that day. And of course, we had programs. We had Friday morning assemblies, basketball. I know I played basketball at one time. That's how I know basketball. We had prom, the typical things that a school would have. My dad was a principal, and me being his son, he always, he never did treat me no different. He could speak to me and I could listen to him, but my mother was the one that really, she was really the one that really kept me straight. It kept all of us straight. She just wanted me to do right. But they tried to set an example for everybody. You know, they didn't try to lead you in a different way. They'd always try to lead you down a straight and narrow path. The teachers really cared for the students. And you don't realize that until you're out of school. If they didn't take the interest in teaching you the basic things that you need to know, then you, you're not going to go far in life. We had a lot of successes uh, that went on from Darwin to uh, tremendous careers there. So that attests to the foundation that we received with what we had. Despite having fond memories, Darwin students and teachers unfortunately faced an unforgettable tragedy. In January of 1963, the community and the school were shook to the core when the school burned. That morning, as everyone prepped for their day, they were suddenly faced with their school in flames. The community was devastated and quickly realized that everything they knew was gone. Darwin was the center for not just the students that attended the school, but for the community that found the school to be the hub of their everyday lives. It was their gathering place for education, social life, and more. Little did they know that this event would change their lives forever, not just at Darwin, but for the whole Upper Cumberland. The school burned when I was midway of sophomore year. I remember going down the hill from my home to go to school and it was on fire. In January 1963, a tremendous change occurred. That was when our school burned uh, down. I can still remember that morning, believe it or not. Uh, I was an eighth grader. Uh, I was at home. Uh, I was finishing uh, getting dressed uh, and my cousin came running up to the house. We all live right next door to each other. Uh, he came running up to the house. The school's on fire. The school's on fire. It was just on fire when I was going to school that morning. It was just on fire. It was in flames. Didn't know what had happened. We were all just there, uh, big-eyed and uh, watching everything happening. And at, at that time, you know, we weren't even thinking about what were we going to do? It was just the excitement of a fire and your school is burning down. And then a little bit later on, you know, it hit. Gosh, our school is gone. Nobody uh, really could visualize it burning down. But from, I, from what I was taught that when it was really noticed 
it was too far gone to save it. And they, of course, they, ever, they never knew. There's always rumors going around that somebody, an individual started it, but they couldn't prove anything, so. Uh, and nobody ever knew. Well, uh, as far as I know, I've never heard what it caught from. You, you know, it, it, it hurts you to know that you went there that long and all of a sudden it's gone. So it is a big surprise. The school board or whoever made the decisions at the time, including the principal at Darwin, decided that the students would go to churches in the community to finish the school year. That's where they had all the, all the kids was scattered out everywhere and they made the best of We did the best we could with what we had. It was finally decided, uh, they worked it out with um, some of the churches in the community, the black churches, that was uh, going to house uh, the, the students to allow us to finish the school year. Because understand, this was in January, and we still had um, uh, May or June to get to, uh, to finish out that school year. You know, we weren't really thinking about uh, some other school. We were just thinking now, well, what are we gonna do? And they finally got together with whomever, I don't know, uh, and decided that uh, the, the Presbyterian Church um, would allow some of the students to come in, the Baptist Church would, and then Wright's Chapel here. And so here we were every morning, we'd get up and go to our respective churches uh, to school. I found that there were meetings um, that, uh, that had been uh, taking place in discussing what was going to be done uh, regarding the Darwin situation. I'm sure there was a lot of conversations with the adults more than the children. And of course, uh, those conversations, you, did, you were involved in them. You know, a, a lot of talk as if whether or not the school would be rebuilt. And with my parents, uh, they wasn't for building a new school. It was time for integration. So therefore, they kind of pushed you as far as you need to adapt to it. It's, it's time for it, so move on. With no promise of the school being rebuilt, the community had to make a choice how to move forward with the remaining school year. With combined efforts of the teachers, the school board, and the community, they found a temporary solution. Students would be sent to various black churches in the area to finish the school year. But it wouldn't be long before a decision would be made that would change history forever, the decision to integrate the schools. When that announcement came down, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of anxiety. Uh, there was a lot of fear because then uh, we were going into something that we had, had never even thought uh, would occur. And, and, you know, when I, uh, I often think back now about, um, uh, uh, the school burning, okay? At the time, uh, I thought it was the, I thought the, I thought it was the worst thing in the world uh, that could have happened uh, to us at the time. But then, again, as I got older and I looked back and I thought that was what needed to happen for us to have more opportunity. You know, I don't know if you've heard the, that old adage about separate but equal. Don't you ever believe that. There's nothing um, equal about separate. And, and I know this because, uh, you know, the white schools, they got the first selections of things. We got hand-me-downs uh, at Darwin. I mean, we got hand-me-down books, uh, whatever. Uh, from the schools and somebody will say, well, how do you know? Well, we'd get books that had their names uh, in it or pages torn out of books. 
you know, I often tell people, I said, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really know how poor I was until we got to the white schools uh, to look at, you know, everything that they had that we didn't have, not only in the school situations, but in your, in your daily life uh, situation. Uh, it was probably one of, the, one of the best things that could have happened for us as uh, African-American students, simply because we didn't know what we didn't have until we got to the white schools. Um, I remember walking into Central High School, you know, my eyes got bigger than silver dollars because, you know, I said, you could set two or three of our doll and the whole thing into, into the Central High School. Uh, we walk in there, there's three different levels, uh, classrooms from all ends. Their library was probably as big as our whole school. There were so many more resources, you know, they had all kinds of um, you know, athletic programs, basketball, football, tennis, um, baseball. Um, so all of those things. Uh, they had the different clubs, um, uh, beta clubs, uh, uh, little fraternities. Uh, but, but, I mean, it's just all of the things um, uh, that, that, that was available that we didn't have. In this community, we've always um, played sports with, with our friends, so it wasn't a big transition. Uh, you already knew some of the students was at the high school. To me, the transition from this school here from Darwin to Central High, I really accredit it to the fact of Mr. Ishman Stanton. He took the younger boys back about two years before the schools ever, you know, before Darwin ever burned. And we had a little baseball team, and we wouldn't play with the, against the white boys. One thing about, you know, the segregation and integration, the, the one thing about Cookville, Cookville was a little ahead of its time from that standpoint because even the, the black kids, we were able to play in the minor league and little league baseball programs even during times of, of segregation. So we were playing baseball with, um, with a lot of the white kids at, at, uh, at an early age. So, and I think that helped some uh, when we went into the schools. A lot of the guys that, when I went to high school, I already knew them. And see, that made the transition real good for me, for me personally. It, it was a big difference when we went to Central, uh, the different classrooms. You're, you're housed in one place there, you know. It wasn't moving around as much. <laughs> the reception of the students and the teachers was so great. I mean, the students just took me by the hand and said, here we go for this class, and after that class, here we go for this class, and where we go. So there was never a point where I felt, if you will, lost and by myself because I wasn't. Some of our teachers um, that uh, had taught at Darwin did transfer uh, into the white schools. Um, I can remember, I know Mr. Bohannon, who was our principal, uh, he went to the high school, uh, he taught history. I think it was well accepted. Uh, it's one of those things that you can't change what's going to happen. So you might as well adjust and go on. And I, I think I think it, it done well. Uh, you didn't hear a lot of negative talk about it uh, from people in the community. It was just one of those things that you got to accept what what it is, and that's it. It really at at that age you don't fear things. You don't fear things until it, it happens and you're faced with it and you just have to adjust to it. But that's uh, the difference in Cookville. We didn't have a lot of trouble here that other, other places had to deal with. And a lot of it was because of you knew a lot of the students. You, you uh, had activities in different sports with them. So uh, the ones that wanted to cause problems. 
you just got away from them. You know, you, you didn't just pursue it and keep it going. You just, uh, the friends you had, you relied on them. So it, it, it was a good transition. It was a good transition. You know, the one thing that I will say is, is that, you know, I'm very, I sit here today, I'm very grateful uh, for, uh, for situations uh, that happened, uh, the way things turned out. But I also will sit here and I will tell you that I still, I get very angry to this day about situations and the way it was, because I still think about it didn't have to be that way. And I mean, and even here we are in 2023, I mean, there are still situations that happen and I still say it didn't and it doesn't have to be that way. Despite the tragedy, the students of Darwin prevailed in their education, but it wasn't without the effort from their teachers and school leaders. It was their work that established a foundation that would prove to help the students throughout a lifetime. Now looking back, they recall the silver lining that came from that tragic day. That day changed history forever and future generations giving them opportunities and resources they never had before. There's always a silver lining in things that happen that we think are hazardous because our, tra our um, tragedy but if you think about it and reflect on it, you see the blessings that were a part of the tragedy. Uh, you were reunited with some of the friends that you met in sports or other activities. We didn't realize it at the time, but the school burning, uh, actually there was a silver lining because it, it did uh, force uh, integration, uh, not only for Cookville, but Salina, Livingston, Sparta, um, Allgood, um, and some of those uh, other areas, Silver Point, I, I can't remember what all, what they did, but, uh, but those other major areas uh, that they couldn't then come across county lines to go to the to those uh, bigger white schools, uh, you know, again, it, it, it was always intriguing to me. Later in life, they could come across county lines to go to our black school, but they couldn't come across county lines to go to the the white schools there. But again, that was a good thing because it forced uh, those other locations to have to integrate. It was the fact that I got to go out there in Central High and I got to play basketball with some of the guys that I really knew. And every one of them, it's just like, uh, one of the guys was like uh, Harold Walker. I can remember playing with him. And Harold, back in the day, I, I never would have thought he'd been, be a preacher. But you think of it now, and you know, that's, that's been quite a while ago. But I, that was one of the silver linings. I just got to do things that I didn't, but for some of the younger, younger kids and younger than me, they got to do a lot of different things that we didn't have at Darwin, you know. And that, that's what made it good for them. Some of them got to play basketball, got to play football. Some of them got to do other things, you know. And I know the kid, a lot of the kids got to do a lot of things that we didn't even have at Darwin. But I enjoyed it. I did, I enjoyed the life. I wouldn't take nothing for it limit the recognition to them. I think it would be, the recognition would be to all of the teachers that taught at the school because all of them, I think, had the welfare of the students at heart. What they would think, they would be happy knowing that we're talking about Darwin, just talking about it. Darwin will be remembered through the eyes of not only the students, but also the communities throughout the Upper Cumberland. 
It changed the lives of everyone in ways that will be engraved in its memories and in history for the better. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Where Stories Live. If you like this program, please visit our website and stay tuned for our next episode when we go where stories live. I am Mike Galligan with the Law Offices of Galligan and Newman in McMendel, Tennessee. I support WCTE, the Upper Cumberland's own PBS station, because I believe it is important to create entertaining TV programs that also promote lifelong learning and understanding. When I support WCTE, I know that I am helping our Upper Cumberland community for generations to come. The Law Offices of Galligan and Newman provide clients with large firm expertise and small firm personalized care and service. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.